Do you think it's going to go well with the Jews in the United States or anywhere else in the world? When they're trying to pass even Sharia law in the United States? I mean, come on, wake up! You know, people need to wake up what's going on. My brothers in Israel, you need to wake up. Erev Tov, my name is Stephen ben Danun, your host for Israel Live Evening News. Uh, we have some very interesting things going on in the Middle East, and I want to bring you right up to speed as quickly as I possibly can on these things. Um, today, the United States released $550 million to the Iranians, uh, frozen assets that have been frozen since the um, the, the sanctions that have been put in place years ago trying to force uh, Iran away from to working with nuclear, trying to make nuclear weapons, and that money was released today, even with the evidence that Israel discovered uh, when she intercepted this ship called the Close Sea. Uh, it was carrying dozens of long-range B-302 missiles. And uh, But Zarif, who is the foreign minister for Iran, is strongly... Uh, criticizing Israel, saying that this is nothing but a coincidence before Israeli Prime Minister when he spoke at the, uh, the a uh, APEC meeting in Washington, D.C. in the United States there. Uh, a lot of tensions are rising, and on to top all that off, then we have uh, Mahmoud Abbas, who today announced there is no way uh, he'll recognize Israel as a state. Israel National News reported uh, this Today, says the Palestinian Authority, Chairman Mahmoud Abbas stood his ground on Friday and reiterated that he will not recognize Israel as a Jewish state. Speaking to youth activists and Fatah party and quoted by the Associated Press, Abbas unequivocally declared that there is no way he will recognize Israel as a Jewish state and accept a Palestinian capital in just a portion of East Jerusalem. Abbas further stated that he withstood international pressure in the past when he sought UN recognition of the state of Palestine despite the United States' objections. They are pressing and saying no peace without the Jewish state. He said, though not spelling out who is applying the pressure, there is no way we will not accept. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has insisted that Abbas recognize Israel as a Jewish state, explaining that the Arabs' refusal to recognize Israel stands at the heart of of the conflict. And that's absolutely so. But we know it's not going to get any better, and that's for sure. Um, other news, there's been a lot of speculation that Pope Francis will actually cancel his trip. There's been some news that has suggested, suggested that, that he would cancel his trip in the end of May to Israel. Uh, but today the Jerusalem Post reported that Vatican denies reports Pope cancels visit to Israel in May. Uh, they state, the Vatican denied on Friday reports coming from Israel stating that, the Pope, that Pope Francis has canceled his visit to Israel, scheduled for May due to the ongoing strike of Israel's foreign ministry workers. The strike may create difficulties, but for now, there is nothing further as far as we are concerned, says Father Federico Lombardi, the Pontus May 24th to 26th, uh, trip to Amman, Bethlehem, and Jerusalem will mark the 50th anniversary of the landmark trip there by Pope Paul VI in 1964, the first pope uh, in modern times. Pope John Paul II visited in 2000, and Benedict the 16th went in 2009. It's kind of odd. If you notice, the places he's planning on going is Amman, Bethlehem, and Jerusalem. Well, I'm sure East Jerusalem. Uh, as we've seen many times before, the Pope seems to have nothing to do with Israel uh, and the Israeli people. But certainly, as history has already proven us, they have recognized the Palestinians as a state. But it wasn't until 1993 that uh, the Jerusalem state was ever recognized. In light of the Pope's trip to Israel in May, one scripture came to mind as I began to think about the prophetic landscape that we're looking at. And that is a scripture found in Obadiah. Maybe an, un, an unusual place to look for a scripture for that. But uh, 
But it says here in verse, starting in verse 10, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. On the day that thou didst stand aloof, on the day that strangers took captive his substance, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, then thou too was one of them. But thou shouldst not have looked, looked on the day of thy brother, on the day of his misfortune, nor shouldst thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah on the day of their destruction. You know, that's looking back to 70 AD is what God is looking at. When the Romans, you know, there's many scholars that say, well, it really wasn't Rome that invaded with Titus. It was uh, soldiers from the eastern part of the Babylonian Empire. Well, Esau's, his descendants, the brothers of Israel, the brothers of Jacob, were very much a part of that, as God clearly points out right here. Notice the words in here, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. On the day that thou didst stand aloof, on the day that strangers took captive his substance. See, God knows too that Jacob, excuse me, in the case when Jacob was being defiled, that it was Esau that stood by and did nothing about it and then allowed the temple treasures to be brought back to Rome, paraded by the Roman general, Titus. Let me read on a little bit more, though, because it also speaks of her judgment. Because here again, we have the Vatican coming into Israel to make a covenant. It's not really the Palestinians making the covenant, so I guess it really doesn't matter in the first place what Mahmoud Abbas has to say, because God will certainly be dealing with the one that's really guilty. And that's Esau's descendants, who are the Romans from the Vatican. So we go on to read right here, uh, verse 12. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, on the day of his misfortune, nor shouldest thou rejoice over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. So clearly it's showing the house of Judah when, they were, when it was being destroyed. Nor shouldest thou have spoken proudly on the day of distress, Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. So it shows that, yes, the Romans were a part of that uh, force that came in with Titus as well. Nor shouldest thou have been among those that looked on their affliction on the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on the substance on the day of their calamity, nor shouldest thou have stood on the crossway to cut off those who escaped nor shouldest thou have delivered up those who remained on the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all nations, as thou hast done, it shall be done to thee. Thy deeds shall return upon thine own head. Rome, your time is coming, as well as the rest of the nations. No wonder why God says in his word that he will gather all nations unto Jerusalem, unto Israel, for the battle, for that day is near. And we're living in that hour. I'm Stephen Danoon, your host with Israel Live. Good evening and Shabbat Shalom. Hundreds of soldiers, all of us with our faces painted. We're all standing there with all of our equipment on, all of our gear. Everybody's brain is buzzing, like trying to figure out what the heck's going on. So they hand us this little card, this laminated card, but it says, Tfila Lifni the prayer for going out to battle. And there's this rabbi standing there in front of all of us, and he yells at the top of his lungs. And he says the psukim, right? Like the statements in the Torah that the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, says to the nation before the nation goes off to battle. He says, you are the army of Israel, and you're going to war, but you will not be afraid because God is going out to war with you. God is going to fight your battle for you. I think I speak for uh, for the other guys who were there. All that buzzing, all that like confusion that was going on, it was just like, focus. We went into Gaza and God went into Gaza with us.